In this video, you're going to learn about categories and different types of security controls in cybersecurity. So this video is part of a series to help you study for the CompTIA Security Plus 701 exam. However, if you're watching this video at a later date, if there's like 801 or whatever they decide to call the next exam, a lot of this information will still be beneficial usually. Um, number one, because it's what you need to know in cybersecurity anyways, but also because a lot of these certification exams don't really change in each new version. There's usually just minor changes that they do. So as I mentioned, we'll talk about different categories of security controls and the different types of security controls in this particular video. So just a quick high level on security controls. All we're talking about are things that organizations use to help protect against cyber threats or other threats. So um, for example, physical controls we'll talk about. Those could be things that you use in everyday life even. So for example, if you have a house, you might have locks in your doors, locks in the windows, maybe an alarm system. Maybe you have a dog or a fierce cat or a fence. All these things are what we would call controls. And when we talk about cybersecurity or just security in general, we want to layer these controls. So for example, if a burglar comes to your house and you just have a door lock, they might be able to pick the lock and get in. But if you have a fence, if you have a security system, if you have a door lock, if you have window locks, if you have a fierce guard dog, all these things are layering security controls to make it much more difficult for someone to get in and to really make it where they're like, eh, this is too hard. Let me go next door to the neighbor where they don't have any of that stuff going on. So security controls are broken up into four main categories, technical, managerial, operational, and physical. And we'll talk about each one of those real quick. So technical controls are what a lot of people think about when they think of security controls. So these can be anything really digital. So it could be encryption that we're using for our data, whether in transit or at rest or a combination of those. It could be using uh, endpoint solutions, so like EDRs, so endpoint detection and response, XDRs, or MDR, which is more of a service. It could be using multi-factor authentication, it could be network segmentation. So any number of digital controls, these are those quote unquote technical controls that you're looking at. For managerial controls, these are more focused on things like policies, procedures, kind of establishing different guidelines of how the organization actually manages its cybersecurity posture. So examples of this could be like um, the organization doing security awareness training, uh, performing risk assessments, developing incident response plans or, or IR playbooks. Um, how do we handle data? So data handling procedures, having a password policy, et cetera, et cetera. So a lot of things that can go in this, but this is more of a, a policy focused thing. Then you've got operational controls. Um, these are more of kind of the, that day-to-day -day stuff that we're doing, right? So things like our patch management process, vulnerability scanning, um, continuous monitoring, so using our SIM solutions, our XDRs, EDRs, et cetera, to monitor things, uh, configuration management, security monitoring, as I mentioned, auditing, et cetera, et cetera. So really that, what are we doing day-to-day -day for our security? What controls are we, are we using on a day-to-day -day basis? And then we got physical controls, as I mentioned in the example of your house, these could be things like door locks, window locks, a dog, a fence, et cetera. In the same way for a company, these can be the exact same things, right? You can have a fence, you can have ca surveillance cameras, you can have a security team, you, you could potentially have dogs, although uh, many places don't use them just because of risk involved. You can, uh, this can even could be things like uh, temperature monitoring systems, fire suppression systems. So all these physical controls are helping to protect not just against a cyber incident, but any type of incident might, that might negatively impact the organization or cause undue risk. So that's all the categories of controls. Now let's dive into the actual different types of controls. So a variety of controls, I'm not gonna read all these on the screen here, you can read them yourself, but we're gonna go through each one of these different types of controls. So preventative or preventive controls are those that are basically designed to try to stop an incident before it occurs. So these are any number of controls, honestly, not just technical ones. So it could be things like using access, and access control lists, firewalls, um, EDR solutions, encryption, security awareness training, et cetera, et cetera. So there's just a ton of preventive controls out there. But again, as the name implies, the goal here is to try to stop things before they actually happen. Next up, we have deterrent controls. So these are really meant to discourage an individual from violating security policies or attempting unauthorized actions. Um, so for example, this could be, let's say there's a restricted area in the company and 
let's say Ken is a malicious guy one day and I just feel like being bad. So I want to try to go in that restricted area, but you've got security cameras, you've got door locks, you've got security controls, et cetera. So I'm like, eh, I don't really want to get a criminal case, so I'm not going to go in there and, and mess with things, right? So that's just a deterrent, right? These things are just there to try to deter you from actually doing some type of um, malicious action, whether it's an insider or an outsider, right? So for example, security camera, fences, guard dogs, security patrols, et cetera, all this stuff might deter someone from trying to break into your company. Next up, detective controls. So essentially, I mean, the main thing here is logs, right? So security logs, doing uh, audits, um, using different types of network monitoring tools to pull those logs, SIM solutions, et cetera. So just really trying to identify like, hey, did something occur? So if you ever want to get a job as like a SOC analyst, cybersecurity analyst, this is going to be a huge part of your job. It's going to be part of that detection process to try to figure out what potentially has occurred. Now, again, not every incident and I think that's maybe a misconception at the entry level. Not every incident is necessarily malicious, right? There's actually a lot of accidental things that people do just from trying to do their day-to-day -day stuff. So that's where the detective stuff comes in, though, right? Trying to find out what is going on or did something actually occur. Next up, we've got corrective controls. Um, I mean, the name here is also kind of like... Um, the uh, preventive, right? The name is self-explanatory. So corrective controls are here to try to mitigate the impact of a security incident. So this could be having a proper IR plan in place. It could be having uh, incident response playbooks that we're using in the SIM solution to automate our response to certain things. It could be detection engineering. So for example, if Larry in accounting tries to run a PowerShell script and it doesn't normally do that, we have something built in that detects that, stops it, isolates the system from the network so we can investigate further to help protect against, for example, a ransomware attack from spreading. Um, having things like data back, proper data backups and recovery procedures, uh, restore points, et cetera, et cetera. So that's all these corrective types of controls of, hey, the yeah, there's an incident, but how can we minimize that impact of the incident? Next up are compensating controls. So the best way to think about this is a lot of, organ I mean, just about every organization, I don't know, I honestly don't know any that don't use some type of framework or best practice as their kind of baseline for security. So for example, like PCI DSS, might require an organization to have two people um, physically check something, but at a smaller company, you might not have the actual financial resources to hire two people. So with that being said, they offer a, what's called a compensating control, which basically gives a similar level or equivalent level of security for something. So in our example of, of a small company being told, hey, you need to hire two people, and they say, hey, we don't have two people to look at this thing, they might be able to put in like a second layer of authentication or have another check in the, you know, kind of another control in place that helps them give an equivalent level of security for that system or that application but without them having to hire a whole other person. Because again, a smaller company doesn't have the resources to hire a bunch of people to do all this stuff. So that's an example of a compensating control of how it might be used. And, and typically it's something like that where, where we don't maybe have the resources or we just can't actually, based on the way that our organization is set up, we can't put that thing in place. So I'll give an ex another example from healthcare. This is a real life example. So this one healthcare organization was using an outdated clinical system. So by that, I mean like nursing or pharmacy system and like outdated. I'm talking like 1990s before some of you were even born. And so the company that, that built the software, the wrote the software, they're obviously out of business, et cetera. So anyways, um, they were trying to meet a certain standard and they couldn't do that with that system. So what they had to do instead of upgrading that to the latest version, they had to just put in uh, additional security controls, and I won't say what those are to help protect them, but they put in additional security controls were basically compensating controls to help mitigate that risk. And then finally, we have directive controls. So again, these are very similar to managerial in the aspect of the directive controls are basically policies or directives that mandate specific actions or behaviors. Earlier, I mentioned like a password policy, for example, um, something like that, right? It could be also data handling practices, could be um, access permissions could be a guideline that outlines uh, acceptable use of resources. So, for example, in the case of a nurse, it might say, hey, just because Beyonce is at the hospital doesn't mean because you're not working with her. So it doesn't mean that just because Beyonce is at the hospital and you're a, you're a nurse with access, it doesn't mean you can go access Beyonce's chart. Right. So those types of policies that are in place saying, hey, this is how you need to do things 
And if you don't do that, here's the consequences of you not doing the right thing there. So that's all the different types of categories and types of security controls for what you need to know for the Security Plus exam. But, but basically, in general, by understanding these types of categories and controls in the, in the general cybersecurity realm, um, you can help organizations really develop better strategies to help protect their assets, um, which includes all sorts of things, right? IP could be critical applications, critical services, et cetera, especially if we talk in the aspect of uh, critical infrastructure. So, for example, making sure that the nuclear power plant doesn't melt down and cause chaos, right? Making sure that the um, that the steam valve actually stays closed and doesn't open and kill somebody, um, which has actually unfortunately happened. I actually know someone that one of their coworkers, uh, because there was a failure in stuff, um, unfortunately their coworker was killed that way. So, anyways, I digress. Hopefully, this video helped you. Um, again, this is for 1.1 of the Security Plus exam to help you study for that exam.